Amen. Praise the Lord. Saints to God be the glory. Amen. I am uh, just uh, glad to be in the house one more time. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, God, for allowing us once again together in his name. God, I pray, God, that you open up the fallow grounds of our hearts so that the word of God may be planted. God, give us in this time, God, your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, your power, your might. Let the counsel of the living Lord fall afresh upon us. God, come on in and occupy us, God, and have thine way, God. We thank you for yet another day of grace and mercy. And we pray, God, that we will continue to abide in it. We love you, God, and we thank you for it all. For us in the precious and mighty and wonderful name of Christ, we do pray this prayer that the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. Well, saints, once again, amen. I am um, glad to be amongst the saints. Amen. I thank God for what he's doing in our lives. Amen. I know today, you know, is our, our, our usual fast day and I'm, and I'm grateful and I'm thankful for it. Amen. I was just sharing with first lady earlier that I needed that, that on my job today. Amen. Because it, it helped me to press on with a little bit more patience for people. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. But at the same time, I found out, especially on Tuesday nights, uh, the devil has always got something that's trying to distract us. Amen. Because he, he knows his Bible study night on Tuesday night. So so when I get to the job, it seems like it's always something trying to distract me from, from, from keeping my mind on the word. Amen. But I, I thank God somebody say, fasting to do it for you. Amen. Amen. It, it'll keep you in the right spirit. Amen. And so I'm grateful and I'm thankful. Amen. For it. Amen. Well, to God be the glory tonight. Uh, we will continue. Uh, in the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, amen. And we find Jesus is, is talking and preaching and teaching the word of God. He's expounding on the, the word of God. And as we look in the seventh chapter of Matthew, uh, by the time we finish the seventh chapter, five things we will have uh, discussed, amen. Uh, judging others, three ingredients to a healthy prayer life, uh, how we conduct ourselves uh, when it comes to others, uh, decision and discernment and entering into the kingdom of God. Amen. Th those are the five things that Jesus will discuss um, in chapter seven of, of the book of Matthew. Amen. It, 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 those are the main things, but in each one of them, you can find something else. Amen. The word of God can always bless you in, in another aspect. Amen. But tonight um, we're going to I'm going to say, because of how this chapter is, is configured, amen, we're going to get through the, the first 12 verses, amen? Well, in verse number one and two, Jesus says this, he said, judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure you uh, met, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. So he begins uh, to talk about judging now. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. Uh, judging. Uh, what is judging? Amen. Judging is simply to form an opinion. Amen. Uh, um, and it's something that God um, teaches us that we really don't want to do. Amen. I mean, because however you judge something or someone, uh, you need to understand that you'll be judged as as well. They're going to hold you up to the same measure. Amen. And, and so uh, my thing that I would like to you to take away from this besides not judging, but that if you do judge, can you judge righteously? Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory. Have mercy. Uh, and the only way you're going to find yourself judging righteously is judging by the word of God, ju judging in the attitude that God has called us to be in. You know, when we talk about the attitudes, the different things that he tells us to put on, such as meekness, uh, uh, or keep your peace. Amen. The peace that he gives you and so on and so forth. So, so even when we judge, we got to be in a state of mind that says uh, this is a righteous judgment uh, from the word of God. Amen. Uh, oftentimes people will say you judge and even when you're telling the truth. Amen. But but long as the truth is what in the word of God, tell somebody uh, just do it in love. 
Amen. Glory be to God. But if you're going to inform an opinion about someone or something, tell somebody, just, just be able to do it righteously. Oh, be wow. able to do it okay. by the word of God. So many times we're trying to uh, uh, minister to people and we're pointing out um, their, their, their faults, their blemishes. We're pointing out their sins in, in such a way that there's no mercy with it, in, in such a way there's no grace with it. Amen. But, but we have to learn that even when we are, are, are telling someone the truth, tell somebody we got to do it in love and by the word oh, of wow. God. If, if you really want it to be accepted and you want, it to per, you want the person to change, amen. But, but here he, he, he just simply tell us, you know, watch when you judge. He said, he, he said I'd rather you not judge. He said, judge not. He said, uh, that she be what? Not judged. I mean, you need to understand that when, when you start passing out judgment, your opinion on things, that, that people are going to what? Uh, pass their opinion on you. Amen. Glory, have mercy. And, and if you're a uh, uh, Lord, you, you don't want to be one of the people that says, uh, uh, do as I say and not as I do. As long as you're in the word of God, if, if you're going to judge me, judge me by the word of God. Judge me by something that what that can change me, that can help me, that can uh, uh, enlighten me. Yeah, glory be to God. Judge not that ye be not judged. He said, for with in the second verse, he said, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Amen. Especially for as as Christians. Amen. You can't go even your brothers and sisters. You can't go around judging them and, and expect you are not going to be held to the same standard. Oh, glory, hammer. But we're going to talk about that a, 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 a little bit later on in, in the text. Amen. But, but he's simply saying to us, first of all, don't judge. But if you're going to judge, judge, judge righteously. Judge according to uh, 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 the standards of God, and, uh, the principles of, of God, the, 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 um, God's word. Amen. And understand that, that the way you judge them is the same way you're going to be judge amen if you hold them to the standard in god's word you need to know that that same standard what you're gonna be held to amen glory be to god amen as a christian we have standards that that god is holding uh, is calling us to uphold amen and so if they judging you by the word of god tell somebody that's all right because that's why i'm supposed to be anyway amen so so this thing about judging yeah glory be to god amen and so Jesus was continuing his sermon on the mount when he begins to talk about um, this judging. Amen. Oftentimes we as, as the children of God, the saints of God, uh, glory be to God. We need to understand this. The Christian is called to show unconditional love, but the Christian is not called to unconditional approval. Amen. Uh -huh. See, uh, yeah. a lot of times we think... Um, uh, when we're showing somebody love, amen, even in a sinful state, amen, we have to be careful because people sometimes take uh, our unconditional love to, to, to mean that we approve what they're doing. But tell somebody, but if what they're doing is wrong, amen, I can love you, but I need you to understand that, well, I'm not giving you an unconditional approval, amen. I'm, I'm telling you by the word of God that what you're doing is wrong. It, it's not by the standards of God. I'm gonna love you in spite of, regardless of. But but at the same time, I just don't need you to to fool yourself into believing that I'm approving what you're doing. Yeah, glory, have mercy. Uh, God tells us uh, to love people. Amen. It, it doesn't matter what your condition is. I'm still called what as a Christian what to love you. Amen. Oh, the problem sometimes with us is that. When we are showing people love, like I say, they they, they can get it twisted because of uh, 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 glory. We, we want to show them love all the time, but we don't want to tell them that they're wrong and what they're doing. Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So if you're giving that kind of love and not telling them uh, right from wrong, not telling them the truth in the word of God, then you, you'll you be in more of a hindrance uh, rather than, than than all this love you think you've given. Amen. Tell, tell somebody that, that that's another side of love that yeah. says, hey, you know what I'm saying? It's a correcting side of of love. Amen. And the correcting side of love will give them what? The, the truth. truth. Jesus. Amen. The so truth. so be careful in, in the judging that you judge righteously, righteously that you judge according to the, the word of God. Because when you do it according to the word of God, tell somebody, say, you really ain't judging then you're just giving them the word. 
You know what I'm saying? Judging is, is really when you start trying to make your own opinions about something. But but we as saints must stay in the word of God so that everything we do is according what? To the book. It's according to what Jesus has said. It's according to his ordinances that he has put out. It's according to how he's changed us and, and opened up our minds and, and given us a word that's, that's deep inside. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Uh, help us today. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. So, so in the way some people think the way to make oneself more righteous is to be more judgmental of others. And, and right here, Jesus is really just, he just throwing that out. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. He's rebuking that kind of thinking. Amen. Glory be to God. Why? Because out of all things, we are still to live holy. We are still to live righteously. We are still to be seeking the word of God. And when we find things in our lives that are uh, outside the will of God, outside his boundaries, tell somebody, say, we need to get them things straight so that what we can stay in the will of God. Amen. So, so, uh, uh, we give them unconditional love, but we give them unconditional love with the truth of the word. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. So moving right along in verses uh, one and two, he said, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. This is a principle upon which Jesus built the commandment. Judge not that you be not judged. Amen. Because uh, uh, you're going to be judged the same way you judge somebody, the same standard. Amen. And hopefully, amen, your standard is in the word of God. Amen. I mean, I can remember, you know, growing up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, we had some standards that later on I found out wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the word of God. Amen. But, but you know, I had lived with those standards and it took me a, a little while. It, it really it took me having a, a relationship with Christ to change those old ways. Amen. Glory be to God. But once I changed them, amen, my life got better. Amen. I, I began to, to soak in the word of God. So, so tell somebody, say, if you got something that's outside the wheel, you just, just get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, just get rid of it. Amen. And, 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 and you got to start with your way of thinking. Amen. Glory. Helmers. What you mean, Pastor? I'll give you a, 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 a quick notion of what I mean. I heard a saint one time tell me that they wasn't going to change. Amen. And, and that kind of stuck with me. And it kind of, you know, it, it it kind of made something in me cringe up, amen, when a saint say they are not going to, to change, amen. Tell somebody, say, say as long as you're in the word of God, glory, amen, you're going to change, amen, yeah, because there are some things in our lives that simply what? Not by the book, amen. amen. And if you're going to stay in Christ Jesus, amen, those things that are not by the book, amen, Oh, Lord, have mercy. Somebody say, don't, don't let your salvation hey, be given away simply because you won't change. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you was all that wonderful, I know we wonderfully made, amen, glory, have mercy. Yeah, but, 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 but I tell folks all the time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know God said I'm wonderfully made, but I just, I, I'm just wonder right now. I ain't made it to the full yet. You know what I'm saying? But the more I search the word of God and begin to change things in my life, then I can become what? Wonderful. Amen. Glory. He spoke it on you, but you still got to what? Walk in it. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. So, so when you say you won't change, you telling God that you, you, you perfect, you, you, you all right the way you are. And if you was all right the way you were, then it, it, it's, it's, it's a couple things wrong with that. First of all, the Bible said we all born what? Into sin. Amen. Mm -hmm. And since we born into sin, uh, uh, before you got saved, you had a sinful nature. Yeah. And I'm just going to be honest. Even when I got saved, there was some stuff about me that still wanted to perform sinful uh, 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 acts. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, yes, it, it was yes. still some things that I wanted to do. But but through prayer and fasting and reading and meditating, I learned what? That I could live uh, without those things. Oh, somebody don't get me. Uh, that, that, that I could what? That I could put those uh, what word I want to use. There, there's something that I, I, I've learned to uh, uh, kill. Amen. <laughs> In my flesh. Amen. Glory be to God. But but nevertheless, if if, if, if 
when it comes to the word of God, because God is perfecting us and we are maturing in the word of God, then tell somebody we're always changing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Every time, you know, when you hear the word of God, that same word you got last week, this week, it makes it may appear a little different to you. Amen. Somebody said the revelation got a little different to you. Yes. Amen. And it caused you what, to change something. Yes. Uh oh, glory be to God. So, so don't be one of those folks that say, I'm not going to change. I'm all right the way I am. Uh, say, uh, it, it'll be a sad thing to get to heaven. Amen. Glory. And, and, and God said, well, you know what? Because you didn't want to change, I can't let you in. I don't know who you are. Jesus. I can't let you in. Because you didn't want to change. I, I can't let you in because what you were doing was, was not of me. Amen. The way you were carrying yourself, it wasn't of me. No. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let, let's go on. Amen. Tell somebody, say, just be careful, be careful. with the judging thing. Jesus. Amen. Because the way you judge somebody is the way what? You're going to be judging. And so Jesus goes on in this uh, third through the fifth verse. Amen. He, he, he talks a little bit more about the principle of regarding judging. He says, he said in verse number three, and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? He said, or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. He said, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Amen. So in other words, when you look at it, and he just told us about judging, he's simply saying here in verses three, two, three through five, first of all, he said, uh, your brother might just have a speck in his eye, a, 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 a small blemish, you know what I'm saying? But a small fault. Amen. He said, but here you are, you got a plank in your eye. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said you you can't even see for your your plank, but somehow or another you think you see a, a, a speck in your brother's eye. He said, "Look at here, glory." He said, "Watch thou self." Amen. He, he said, "If you got a a if your brother got a moat in his eye, a speck, <coughs> and you got a beam, he said you might want to be careful." Glory, have mercy. But before you what try to cast what judgment. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. He he goes on in the foreword. He said, how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye. In other words, it's going to be hard for you to, to get the, even a speck out of my eye when you got a beam in yours, because you, how could you see, how could you even see the speck in my eye with the big beam in yours? Uh oh, glory, have mercy. He said, he just simply saying, be careful when you judge. Because in verse number five, he says, What? Thou hypocrite. Glory, have mercy. Thou hypocrite. And a hypocrite is one who puts on a mask and fiends himself to be what he is not. Uh -oh. Somebody say, You're fake. Mm. You're not the real McCoy. Glory, have mercy. He, 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 Jesus, I didn't call you a hypocrite. The word of God say hypocrite, thou hypocrite. He said, and why are you being a hypocrite? He said, because first you need to cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then shall thou see clearly. Uh oh, glory, have mercy. Uh, he said, thou can see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. In other words, he said, recognize and deal what? With your own faults first. Mm. Recognize and deal with your own mm. shortcomings. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because once you, if, if you get those together, you what, you'll be, you can see clearly what to help your brother. You can see clearly to to help your sister. It's hard to help somebody when when you can't see yourself. You know what I'm saying? How you gonna lead me somewhere and you can't see? That don't that that, that don't even sound good. But nevertheless, amen. He said, recognize and, 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 and get yourself together. Get the, the beam out of your eye, and then you'll be able to, to help somebody get the, 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 the speck out of their eye. Uh, 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 glory. Have mercy. Amen. He said, thou hypocrite. He said, first. Uh-oh, glory. Have mercy. Uh, uh, first. Jesus said, first deal with yourself. That's what he said. First deal with yourself. Amen. Deal with your own things that you got going on before you trying to tell somebody how to get their life straight. Deal with your own life. 
Look at what he's saying. De de deal with you. Yeah, glory. I don't know about y'all, but I got enough stuff to deal with. Yeah, hey, glory. Have mercy. Hey, Amen. Yes, yes. You know, I, I got to, you know, not only get myself together, but I got to keep myself together by what? The word yes. of God. Yeah. Just so happened that, that I'm in a position, what? Not to condemn you, but a, a position, what? To help you. Amen. By using the word of God. So he, so Jesus says in the fifth verse, thou hypocrite, oh, hypocrite, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Amen. It reminds me of a situation one time when I was, uh, glory, have mercy, when I had gotten saved. I was in Turkey, and and um, me and one of the brothers used to go to the to the gym. He was. Uh, he was married and um, doing a single tour in in Turkey, and and um, he noticed that at the time uh, uh, a young lady seemed to be interested in me, and 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 uh, and I was kind of leaning that away too. And and he said uh, to me, he came to me one day. He said, he said, bro, he said I've been struggling with this. <laughs> I said, well, bro, what you been struggling with? He said, um. He said, first of all, I just need you to understand that I've been where you are. I, I'm, I've not always been married. I, I've been with, where you are. And he said, as a, a born-again Christian, he said, I know that there can be a, a struggle. He said, the only thing I need to ask you, uh, since you are, uh, you appear to be interested in that, that, that <laughs> he didn't say sister, he just said, you appear to be interested in that girl. You know what I'm saying? He said, I just got one question to ask you. He said, is she saved? He said, is she saved? You know what I'm saying? And and he was he was simply saying, you know what? I can remember when I had that that plank in my eye. You know, he said, but you know, through time God dealt with me, you know what I'm saying? I got married. He said, but I still know how it was to be single. And so now I'm my brother's keeper. He said, first, I, I thought me and you were going to have some problem if I brought this up. He said, but I got to go by what the word of the Lord say. So I'm just going to ask you, brother. If she ain't professing Christ, you might want to move on. Uh-oh, glory, have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> so so he was not judging me, per se, but he, he was concerned about me as a as a brother in Christ. So, so he came to me in in love with the word of God. Amen. And, and so therefore I didn't see it as if he was judging me. I saw him looking out for me when it came to what? The word of God. He didn't want to see me unequally yoked with somebody that was not even uh, serving God or attempting to, to serve God. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Have mercy. And so he did it in love. And I'm saying that to say this, this is what we have to do. Amen. There, there have been some times in our lives where we've had the planks. Amen. And, and God has removed those planks. And, and since God has removed those planks and given you the, the, the wisdom and the understanding and the knowledge of his word, uh, uh, don't be afraid to share with your brothers or your sisters. Amen. But do it in such a manner Amen. Somebody said that it, it brings glory unto God. Amen. Glory. So you can bring glory unto God and help somebody get delivered. Amen. Help somebody grow. Help somebody to mature. What? In the word of God. Amen. Well, nevertheless, amen. That, 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 let, me, let me move on. Amen. Glory and mercy. He, he helped me get a, a, a speck out my eye. Amen. Yeah. Glory and mercy. He helped me get a, a, a blemish out my eye. I so that I can see somebody so I can say see clearly. Hey Lord Jesus, thank you. Amen. Glory. Thank but if <laughs> but if he had not used, amen, his own experiences, amen. Glory, have mercy. It might have been hard for him to, to minister to me like that. Amen. But nevertheless, amen to God be the glory. Amen. So when Jesus uh talks here in the third through the fifth verse, amen, he's just giving us a little bit more to to He's, he's expounding to us about the subject of just judging. Amen. Uh, he's saying, hey, take take time, amen, to, to deal with, with you. Recognize and deal with the things that you got going on. And, and it'll be much easier for you to help somebody else when, 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 you know, with their blemish or with their shortcoming. Amen. Glory be to God. But you got to first start 
with yourself. Amen. Because how you judge them, the same measure, the word of God will be used, what? To judge you. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 Well, let's move on right along. Amen. That was uh, verses one through five. In verse number six, amen, Jesus began to tell us uh, the balance love uh, with discernment. Amen. Glory. Y'all heard pastors say this before. I, 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 I'm, sometimes it just amazes me how folks can come in church and say, well, you know what? I, ooh, I, I, ooh, I just discern that. Ooh, something in in, in, in in somebody, amen. And, and I told y'all to be careful with that simply because sometimes what folk call discernment, it's just game knowing game. Uh -oh. Amen. Glory, amen. They've been at the club all night. Then they come in here. Henri, you know they've been in the club all night because you used to do it, amen. So <laughs> so you see the same signs that, that's on them that was on you when you used to do it. All and right, now man. you're calling it discernment, but it ain't discernment. That's just game knowing game. In other words, I used to do that same thing. I used to act that same way, and that's how I know. You know what I'm saying? Tell somebody it's the truth anyhow. You know what I'm saying? When we start talking about discernment, we can't talk about it. Let me, let me read the book. Because <laughs> I need you to understand what discernment really is. Amen. Glory hammers. It says, give not that which is, this is verse 6 of the 7th chapter of Matthew. He said, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rid you. Amen. So in this particular verse, amen, first of all, discern means to see the difference between two or more things. Amen. To see the difference between. Amen. Glory. Help us, uh, eh, to see the difference between two or more things. Amen. Uh, discernment is the power or faculty of the mind by which it distinguishes one thing from another, such as truth from falsehood, mm. virtue from vice. Virtue meaning moral or goodness, and vice meaning a fault or defect or, or a blemish. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. So, so be careful when you're talking about uh, discernment. But, but in this particular verse, Jesus is simply saying that we need to balance love uh, with discernment. Amen. Uh, in other words, amen, when he began to say, give not uh, that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, at least they trample them under your feet and turn again and rid you. Uh, oftentimes we're trying to persuade people uh, 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 about the gospel and they're not interested in it. Oh my. Okay. You know, you, yeah. you, you, go ahead. Have mercy. We, that's like us giving the dogs and the swines what? The pearls. Amen. The, the pearls of the kingdom. If, if they don't want it, glory, have mercy. The, you ain't got to force it on them. Amen. Jesus. Glory, have mercy. You ain't got to beat them across the head with it. Amen. But uh, he says, listen to what he says. He said, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. You know what? Before people who don't want it. Jesus. You know, glory, have it, It's a difference between you, you, how can I say this here? It's a difference between you beating somebody over the head with the word of God and you living it. Jeez. Now, if you're living it, convicts them. So tell somebody, say that, that that's another thing in itself. Amen. But you trying to speak it on it and tell it on them and force it on them. Uh, tell somebody, it's like you beating them across the head with it. Only thing you have to do is live the life, amen. And the life you live will con convict them, amen. But oftentimes you... I'll just say it like this. Oftentimes, we're having conversation with folk, and we're trying to defend the gospel. Amen. But tell somebody, I said, the gospel can defend itself. Jesus. My you know what I'm saying? Especially what? If you live it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't have to argue with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm trying to defend God. Mm -hmm. We're talking about somebody who holds the, the world in the palm of his hand. We, we talking about somebody who uses the earth as, as, as his 
footstool. We're talking about somebody who who who, uh, who formed the earth, who created the earth. We're talking about somebody that allows you to breathe the air that you breathe. We're talking about somebody who hangs the stars and, and they'll fall when he tells them to fall. We're talking about somebody who tells the sun to stay on its axis and turn and, and go where it's supposed yes, to go. You yes. think he needs you to defend him? We're talking about somebody that, that made you. Jesus. You, you glory. Ah. <laughs> uh, and yet, we are uh, uh, argumentative type um, situation with folk about the gospel. And, and he's saying when we do that, that's not what we're called to do. We're called to to live this life, amen. Because living this life uh, to others can be more of a conviction than anything else. Now, it's different when somebody uh, 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 wants to know about the word and they're, and they're uh, uh, asking you a question because they, they earnestly wants to know uh, 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 why you so different uh, about this God that you, you serve. Tell somebody, say, that's totally different. Mm -hmm. There's somebody trying to scrutinize you, somebody who's trying to pick apart uh, uh, how you live. Yes, so you, you know, that's, yes. that's different. And so he's saying to us, he said, discern. He said, with the love of God, he said, discern when, when those situations are upon you. Discern. Know the difference when somebody is is. is Honestly wanting to know about the word of God and when somebody is just trying to mess with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Glory. He said, all the, 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 the pearls that I've given you, the treasures that's in this word, he said, don't get to them. Don't get to the dogs and the swine. Don't give it to those who don't, don't want it. In other words, don't waste your time on somebody that's not going to receive it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that, that brings up a whole nother uh, conversation there, but I'm not going to go into that tonight. I, I just say this here. Oftentimes we get in those situations simply because uh, we don't listen to the, the that small, still voice that says, minister to such and such. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 or don't, that, that, that they're not ready for that, move on. No, no, they, 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 they don't say something to me, Lord. I, I, I got to tell them a few things. Tell somebody that's not going to go well for you. <laughs> you. You'll wind up being more frustrated simply because you did not follow the Holy Ghost. You did not follow mm. the voice of the Lord. Amen. So, so just, just have, have love for people, but also have discernment mm. concerning those that... Uh, um, Hmm. For for lack of words, those who want to to pick a fight uh, with the gospel, mm -hmm. amen, amen. Mm -hmm. Glory, have mercy, amen. Now, one writer he says this. He said the dogs and swines here are often understood as those who are hostile to the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and the message that announces it, amen. So he just, that that's what the he's saying about the dogs and the swines, mm -hmm. amen. Mm -hmm. So so just be careful amen glory have mercy um he said it may be that in jesus's mind the dogs and swine represent hypocritical judgmental believers amen glory have mercy <laughs> watch this amen he's because uh uh even in 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 church amen even with some of the church folk amen they they can be hypocritical and what judgmental amen so so that's a shame that we got to watch out for people that uh, in our own yeah. congregations, Jesus. amen. Uh, somebody say sometimes then the people that don't want to change, amen, because <laughs> they've been living what All they right. thought was a, 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 they've been living a wrong that they that made a right in their lives, mm. amen. And so therefore they they think they have the right to be uh, a judgmental. Oh, tell somebody say be careful. Be careful. Uh, glory hammers, but we deal with them in a in a whole different different. Um, way. Amen. Glory be to God. We just have to be careful about how we correct our brothers and, and sisters, but we also have to be careful how we live this word uh, um, among other people. Amen. Um, have love for people. Amen. Because we have love for God. We have love for the gospel. And we want people to be saved. We want people to come 
to Christ, amen. But we still have to discern with that love, amen. We still have to discern the situation, amen. Amen, glory be to God, amen, amen. Uh, one of the examples that is used, it said the gospel is to be preached to every creature in Mark the 16th chapter, verse 15. Um, but it said, but when the Jews were hardened and spoke evil of that way before the multitude, this comes from Acts the 19th chapter, verse nine, it said the apostle left preaching them. In other words, amen, they wasn't going to force them to receive what? The word, the word of God. God, amen. And so they had to discern that, hey, they they they, they not really receiving this. They really don't want this here. And, and, and we need to be just like that. We have to discern the situation, discern where we are discerned, even the people that we're talking to. We have love for them, but we still have to discern the situation. Amen? Amen. Uh, Sometimes it's discerning the time. Amen. In the aspect that God may be saying to you, it's not time yet. It's not time. You know, so walk away. It's not time. Amen. You know, that time might be tomorrow. Then again, that time might be somebody else's time you know, to, to speak to them. But you just got to be in the will of God uh, with the love of God discerning what? The time. Amen? Amen. Amen. So so this was the sixth verse of Matthew, the, the seventh chapter. Amen. And then in uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse seven and eight. Amen. Jesus switches to a thing about prayer. Amen. And, and he says in the seventh verse of the seventh chapter of Matthew, Amen. He said, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. He said, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that ask it, receive it. And he that seek it, find it. And to him that knock it, it shall be opened. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Jesus invites us to what? Ask, <laughs> the seek, and the knock. Amen. Uh, we, 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 we've read so many verses before where he said, what well, you have not because you ask, ask not. not. Amen. But, but, uh, asking is a part of a prayer. Amen. Now, now don't, don't, don't get that twisted now. Amen. Sometime in prayer, you just need to listen. Don't always go, go asking sometime. Tell somebody sometime it's just, just a quiet time with you and God. Amen. Because uh, most times we too busy asking God to do this, asking God to do that. Uh, Sometimes we just need to to listen. But but uh, here Jesus is giving us some some more insight on prayer because earlier in the book he he gave us insight on what how to pray. Amen. And now he comes back here and he gives us a threefold description of prayer in the asking, the seeking, and and the knocking. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Uh, he said, ask and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that ask it, receive it, and he that seek it, find it. And to him that knock it, it shall be opened. Amen. Now, I, I, I believe I must say this tonight. Amen. Uh, uh, Jesus tells us to ask, to seek, and knock. Amen. He's given us a, a part of a recipe of the lifestyle what we should be living. You can't go out and just do any old thing and think you can come ask him and, and seek and knock and think you're going to get it. I mean, if you know you sin, if you ought to be asking anything, you ought to be asking to be delivered. Ask for yeah, glory, have mercy, amen. You go and asking him everything but deliverance, oh, amen. Jesus. Tell somebody, say, get delivered first. Get delivered. You know what I'm saying? Because because God ain't gonna keep letting you do wrong and keep pouring all these things out to you. You know what I'm saying? Tell them about ask for deliverance. Hey, glory, have mercy. If the truth be known, you know your shortcomings better than anybody mm. else. You know what I'm saying? And then you got some that God sure enough going to point out to you because he wants to correct them so that what? So that in your asking and seeking and knocking, you can receive. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Have mercy. Amen. The writer said prayer is like asking in, in, in that we simply make our request known to God and everyone who acts receives. Receiving is the reward of what? Asking. You, you, you. So many times we take it for granted uh, that God knows what I need, so we won't even ask. You know what I'm saying? We go to God uh, first day like, well, Lord, you, you know what I need? Yeah, he know what you need. 
but he also have set some guidelines for you to follow. Yeah. And then one is that if you're going to receive, you yeah. need to what? Ask. Yeah. Prayers like seeking and that we search after God, his word, and his will. And he who seeks find. Finding is the reward of seeking. Amen. You know how you used to play hide and go seek? <laughs> Glory, have mercy. Amen. Glory, have mercy. They hide then you go seeking in order to what? Find them, amen. He's a prayer just like that. You know, uh, see, uh, finding is the reward of seeking. No seeking, no finding. Because if you don't seek, that means you what? Didn't look. Exactly. Glory, have mercy. If you didn't look, that means you didn't put no effort to it, amen. You, oh, glory, have mercy. You want God to deliver you from something, but, but you won't seek the word. You won't go find oh, it in the Jesus. word to say, God, in your word, it says it right here. Now, if you go find it in the word, tell somebody you got something what? To stand on. Amen. God, in your word, you said right here, I found it, God. I sought that thing out, God. Matter of fact, I got two or three scriptures on it, God, because I was seeking it. Because when I bring it to you, you know what I'm saying? Glory, have mercy. I want to be rewarded with what? The finding. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. 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 We don't seek God for benefit. Jesus. My Amen. Goodness. Because we know there are what plenty of benefits in, 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 in being in, in yeah, him. Amen. Him. Glory. Amen. But I seek glory. Amen. I might receive a benefit from the seeking, but that's simply because that benefit helps me what? To stay in line with his word. To stay in line what? with the will of God in my life. Amen. Glory. Hammer. So he tells us to ask. Amen. And receiving is the reward of what? Asking. And, and finding is the reward of what? Seeking. Amen. Glory. He said prayer is like knocking until the door is open. And we seek entrance into the great heavenly palace of our great God. Of our king, amen. Glory, Hammers. He said, entering through the open door into uh, the palace of God is the reward of knocking. Glory, Hammers. So, so he gave us three things that we need to do: ask, glory, have mercy, because uh, receiving is the reward of asking, and and finding is the reward of seeking, amen. And knocking is the reward of something being what open. Yeah, the, the, the door opening. Yeah, glory to heaven. That, that's the reward. Amen. But but also knocking uh, implies also resistance. Amen. Glory to heaven. Because that means what? If you're knocking at the door, amen, the door can have a little resistance. Amen. Glory to heaven. Mercy. But but you won't go unless you what? Knock. Amen. Glory to heaven. It, oh, Lord. We need to have a little resistance, amen. If we didn't have no resistance, hey, glory, have mercy. Uh, we wouldn't know. Uh, tell somebody, say, we wouldn't know how to act. So, so we ought to be be thankful, amen. Glory, have mercy, amen. I like what the scholar Spurgeon said when it comes to the knocking. He said this. He said his doors, talking about God doors. His doors are meant to open. They were made on purpose for entrance. And so the blessed gospel of God is made on purpose for you to enter into life and peace. It will be of no use to knock at a wall, but you may wisely knock at a door for it is arranged for opening. opening. Oh, glory. Have mercy. Amen. But but that's the, but he, he said something else about the knocking, which I, I really like. He said this. He said any uneducated man can knock. If that is all, which is required of him. He said, man can knock, though he may be no philosopher. A dumb man can knock. A blind man can knock. With a palsied hand, a man may knock. Yeah. He said, the way to open heaven's gate is wonderfully simplified to those who are lowly enough to follow the Holy Spirit's guidance and ask, seek, and knock believingly. He said, watch this. He said, God has not provided a salvation which can only be understood by learn me. He said, it is intended for the ignorant, the short-witted, and the dying, as well as for others. And hence, it must be as plain as knocking at a door. Glory. Tell somebody, say, ask, ask seek, seek, and knock. 
Jesus has given us some things that we can do in our prayer life. Asking it shall be given you. Seeking ye shall find. Knocking it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Amen. Glory. Hammers. I like the fact that he says that when we do these things, amen, these things help us also what? To stay in line with the word of God. Amen. Because if you're asking for God for something and you're seeking for it, amen, tell somebody that that'll cut out a lot of foolishness because you won't have time to get into foolishness because you're seeking what? The things of God. Ask, seek, knock. Amen. Glory be to God. That was Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses seven and eight. Amen. In verses nine through 11, uh, Jesus simply il illustrates the giving nature of our father, the giving nature of God. Amen. In verse number nine, he simply says this. He said, or what man is there of you whom if his son acts bread will give him a stone? Or if he acts a fish, will he give him a serpent? He said, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Uh, yeah. Glory and have mercy. You know, when I first read this, amen, I, I felt some kind of way. I know you're saying, Pastor, what do you mean? He said, if, if ye then, in, in verse 11, he said, if ye then, being evil, oh, my God, Jesus, have mercy. Uh, God, are, 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 you, are you saying I'm evil or are you just saying that's how I used to be? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because if we think about it, amen, even I'm, I'm going to talk about when I, when I wasn't saved, amen. Uh, even when I wasn't saved, amen. Uh, 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 children, amen. You wouldn't give your children anything that was bad for them. You're always looking out for them. You always wanted to take care of them. You know what I'm saying? That's what you did what? As a, as a parent. Amen. And, and even though you were born into a sinful world and you had a sinful nature, you still did good things for your children. Oh, yeah. glory. Have mercy. Yeah. Amen. Glory. It, it didn't matter how bad they were. Amen. <laughs> you, you, you had some forgiveness in you that you would still what? Do good things what? for them. Amen. That's that's what I took out if thee then being evil. Amen. And and here he said, he said, if ye then being evil in, in the 11th verse, he said, know how to give good things unto your children. He said, even when you wasn't saved, glory, hammer, you still know how to give good things to your children. You know what I'm saying? But now here you have a heavenly father that's been good, what? All the time. You know what I'm saying? Glory, have mercy. He didn't experience uh, uh, being sinful. He just been good from the beginning. Amen. Glory, have mercy. And so he say, uh, uh, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? And now, if you were doing it when you was all messed up, glory, have mercy. Can you just imagine the God you serve, the father that you have now, he's already good. So, so he's not what? Going to withhold any good thing. What? From you. Glory, have mercy. Amen. Uh, he, he got some standards to come along with it. Amen. But, but he won't withhold it from you. Tell somebody, say, just meet the standard. Meet the standard. And it's yours. Uh oh, glory, have mercy. <laughs> or what man is there of you whom if his son... Uh, X bread will give him a stone. Verse 9, 7 chapter of Matthew. Uh, verse 10, or if he acts a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he if you if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Oh my God. That's the kind of God we serve. Uh, somebody say a good father. A good father. A gracious father, mm. a magnificent father, a marvelous father, a good father, oh, a gracious father, a merciful father. Somebody say a faithful father. <laughs> That's the kind of father 
that we have. Amen. And so he is he is not only willing to bless us with good things, but tell somebody that he's able. You know what I'm saying? To bless us with good gifts. Amen. Glory to him. Mercy. Amen. Well, that was verse number 11. And I say, like I say, tonight we're going to end with verse number 12. In verse number 12, amen, Jesus is beginning to conclude his, his sermon on the mount. Amen. And so a partial summary and a re re repeated call to decision. In verse number 12, he simply says this. He said, therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Amen. In other words, uh, uh, we call it what? The golden rule. Do unto others as you have others. What? To do unto you. This is what Jesus is really saying. You know, he just says it this way. He says, therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. He said, for this is the law and and the prophets. In other words, this is the principle that the prophets have been, the law in the in the prophets has been uh, 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 passing along all the time, the so-called golden rule. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Uh, he said, if you want a simple thing, if you want um, saints to fellowship, fellowship with you, tell somebody, say, fellowship with the saints. Mm -hmm. You want saints to be hospitable to you, then you be hospitable what? To them. You want folks to be kind to you. You got to be kind what? to them. Glory. Hammer. In your relationships, in your marriages. Amen. Oh, glory. Hammer. Some of y'all get messed up when your spouse start being kind to you. Amen. Glory. Hammer. Tell somebody, but that's how it was meant to be. That's how it was meant to be. Glory. Have mercy. It was meant for you to show them what? Uh, uh, kindness. It was meant for you to show them benevolence. It was meant for you to to take care of them. It was meant for you to, to love them. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. So that that you want them to give you, tell somebody, say, give it to them. Give it to them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in your everyday life, when you are out and about, amen, you, you should give folks uh, mercy. You should give folk kindness. Amen. You should give folks love. You should give folks the things that you expect for them what? To give unto you. It's it's the golden rule. It's 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 nothing different. Jesus is not teaching us a new thing. Respect others. You know, you want folks to respect you. Tell somebody respect them. Amen. It, it, it's the golden rule. We we learn that when we shoot when we learn to talk. Amen. Glory and have mercy. They was teaching and preaching us that do unto others as you would have others what to do unto you. It has not changed in the word of God. And, and Jesus was simply repeating it uh, 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 in this, this text, Matthew, the, the seventh chapter. Amen. Well, saints of glory, we're going to end there tonight. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Yeah, 753. We thank God for, for his word tonight. Amen. I pray that the word of God has, has blessed you. Amen. We've, we've talked about three things tonight. We've talked about judging others. Uh, three ingredients to a healthy prayer life, uh, act, seek, and knock. Uh, and we talked about uh, how we should treat others. Amen. Do unto others as uh, you have others to do unto you. Amen. Next week, Lord uh, will, we'll get into a decision and discernment and enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Well, saints, that's it for tonight. I thank God. I thank you for tuning in. I pray that the word of God is truly blessed you. It's been an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to share with you the word of God. First day, do we have any announcements for tonight? Amen. To God be the glory. Um, I know Mother's Day is, is right around the corner. Amen. This, this Sunday. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Uh, children, do something special for your mom. Amen. I don't care if you have to make your own card. Amen. Put a personal touch on it. Amen. But do something to let them know how much you appreciate it. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Amen. To God be the glory. Well, if there's nothing else, amen. Let's let's um I know first lady put out a prayer list. Amen. She does it on Sunday. She strolls it on Sunday. Uh is it strolled tonight? First lady. Uh, not tonight. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. But but pray for the the family, amen, the, the poxy family. Pray for our leaders, pray for 
pray for this dying world. Amen. And pray that God will continue to allow us to be a light that shineth in it. Amen. That somebody may come asking, what must I do to be saved? Amen. Uh, tell somebody, say, live the life. Amen. That's what Christ has called us to do, live the life. Well, if there's nothing else and all minds and hearts are clear, let us pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you now, God, for this time of fellowship and communion with, with one another uh, in God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost, and in the word of God. We thank you, God, for opening up our, our ears that we may hear, open up our eyes that we may see, open up our hearts, God, that we may receive what thus said the word of God. I pray now, God, that the word has been sown on good ground, God, and that we as your people, God, will not only eat this word, God, but that we will digest to God and that it will become a part of our everyday lives, our everyday living. Now, God, as we prepare to leave from this broadcast, but never from your presence, go go in us, God. Speak in us. Speak for us, through us, and on our behalf by the gift of your Holy Spirit, God, so that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts may be acceptable to the God we serve. We love you, God, and we appreciate you for it all. For us in the precious and mighty and wonderful name of Christ, we do pray this prayer that the people of God say, Amen, Amen, and amen. Well, saints, as always, until we meet again, as always, be thankful, be blessed, and be in God.